Welcome to the Abarcast, where we speak about fitness, entrepreneurship, and humble beginnings. I have my boy Chris here. He is an entrepreneur and a music artist. Okay. Before I introduce him, Joe, roll the intro. Guys, quick announcements, online coaching and in-person training is available. I do have some open slots for online coaching. If you want fat loss, if you want to build the booty, they call me the booty doctor, hit me up. I got the email there. I got the Instagram tag there. Shoot me a DM, etc. All right. However, I am not the focal point here, guys. The focal point here is my guy, Chris. Chris, I know you, but for the people that don't, please introduce yourself. Yo, yo, what's good? I go by NJ, a.k.a. NJ Chris. AKA the people's champ. And uh what I do is basically, man, I got I'll be doing this music shit for a minute and I do clothes. Nice, nice. So where did you come like come from? Did, were you I know that you just came from Peru, um, from the motherland, right? Recently. We'll get into the V log. But are you fully Peruvian? Were you born there? Were you born here? Where did you grow up? So I was born out here in Jersey City. Um I was Probably like six months when I went to Peru for the first time. I stayed out there for a couple of years and I came back, started going to school out here. So I'm from Union City, New Jersey, North Jersey all the way. And I hadn't been to Peru in a minute, but I recently got to go back recently. Well, we'll how long that. has it been specifically? This trip, it was like 15 years in the making, bro. I hadn't been there for 15 years. You know what's insane? I, I recently just came from Peru as well. I I went there uh, to be with with family, and for me, it was 16 years, and it was completely different. I don't know if yeah, you could nah, you could share your experience, bro. All of a sudden, bro. some of these cities and towns were gated, you know. Yo, facts, bro. I never seen a garage or a four door car like in my city ever 15 bro, years ago. It was yeah, all like moto taxis and shit. Yeah, like, that's yeah, like yeah. A, it's crazy. Like a car, like it's kind. Of, it's like getting up there now. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy to be to 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 be Peruvian um obviously but especially now with the the aesthetics now like it it looks a little bit more updated i remember back in the day before social media peru used to be almost like 15 years behind 10 years behind right yeah, that shit, i had kfc bro you, y'all gonna see that in the vlog we're gonna get into that i had kfc out there that shit, <laughs> yeah, KFC and peru. yeah dude and and for the people that out there that don't know you know before social media radio stations even we would be maybe like a year behind so we would put the radio on in the cars <laughs> we would be hit we would be listening to hits that literally hit this place in the US last year or two years ago and it was just yeah, yeah. recently just hitting right there and then that's a hundred percent right, bro. Like any wrestling fans out there, I remember I used to watch wrestling in Peru and like you watch SummerSlam in like December and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you feel me? Like it's crazy. The, and they'll just play raw like it's like six months back. Yeah, bro. Shit. Shit yeah, bro. So listen, man, like I, I reached out to you, we connected. The reason why, you know, we ended up connecting, what brought my attention on your page, because you ended up following me, was the fact that you were in Peru, you were doing the vlog. Okay, I loved how you were recording your experience in Peru. Talk to me about your trip. Talk to me about the vlog, etc. Hell yeah, I appreciate like getting some time to talk about the vlogs for sure. Um, so the vlog is something new I be doing. To be honest, like I have my boy shout out yeah Mike. Uh, he be doing the vlogs and he comes to all of my events. Like I really came up from doing events where I perform and sell my clothing. Mm. If y'all know, y'all know. Like whoever is like tuned in, but. I started looking at his YouTube channel and I'm like, damn, bro, like this shit is really dope. I want to have content out there because, you know, and being a music artist, like it's kind of like sometimes people feel like you're unapproachable. You feel me? They're like, oh, this guy don't want to talk to me. He wants to just do the show and bounce. Right. But I was like, bro, I wish I knew that I make my own merch. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And I'd be like in the studio doing this and that. So I started vlogging everything and I was like, yo, what if I go to Peru and like try to like not make it like a vacation, kind of like try to find a business aspect to it. So I was out there looking at like, the capital, bro. Like where how the clothes are moving. So Lima stuff. specifically. Lima specifically. Yeah, I was doing like some research there. Everything is bootleg, bro. <laughs> like I, I came back there saying this one crazy thing, bro. I want people to quote me on this. In the United States, people wear real designer and they're miserable. And in Peru, people wearing fake designer, bro, and they're happy as fuck. Like with fake designer on, like that shit is crazy as hell. Isn't that humbling? That yeah, that shit is crazy, bro. Third world country, and I can say like they're actually even eating better than us. Like even though it's hard out there, like. A smoothie's different, bro. You feel me? Like, yeah. 
it's the like out here they ask you like oh, you want the smoothie with like water or milk there it's like it's the whole fruit they're not even gonna ask you like what they're gonna like right. you know right like mix it with so it's, it's definitely like different like and i got to like capture that shit on my vlog a lot bro is the vlog out um no it's gonna be like in three different four parts that it comes out in um the first one should be dropping like i'm not gonna lie like next week if all goes right like, okay all right that's cool man yeah so next week catch the vlog it's gonna be releasing now, talk to me about those business ventures that you were talking, uh, that you were speaking about before, where you wanted to, you know, promote the shirts and all that stuff. Was it successful? Was it not? So, Did you end up doing something else completely? So off the rip, I went with like clothes. Um, one thing about Peru, they're heavy on like import tax and shit. Bro, I went with like a luggage full of like my own merch. Facts. They thought I was trying to sell it because it was brand new. They tried to like tax me, but I told them it was my brand, right? And then I was gonna give it away for free, which I which I did. So yeah. Um, I got to like give away clothes and shit, like promote the brand. But I started realizing something. I'm not gonna lie. Like I feel like it's very hard to like try to sell a streetwear brand in Peru. Cause like I told you, everybody's wearing fake designer, like that, that and that's what they want to buy for the low. So like a, a clothing brand's not really gonna compete with that, to be honest. Like mm. n- not from from what I've seen. Um, I did find like the plug though t- for like to make like cotton jerseys. So I'm about to drop proven jersey. <laughs> Um, pretty that's soon. pretty dope yeah. man i got a sample made out there that's gonna drop pretty soon that's like in, in one of the vlogs and then another thing i did too though like i'm just trying to like make content because like i said like i feel like my life is just even deeper even though this like interview probably was given to me off of like the clothes or the music like i feel like just what i go through like yearly is just got like so much other stuff involved so i'm making like part of the like the youtube vlog is like one of them's like what a hundred dollars could get you in peru that's like a hundred out here is like three hundred eighty four out there. So right. it's like, right. you know, if like I got two thousand business cards made for fifteen bucks technically out here, like you know, it was it's, about uh, stuff yeah, like everything's that. Everything's cheap there. Everything's, Every, cheap. everything's really cheap, and everybody's a business person out there. Like if anyone's been for like, yo, I don't know if you've been to like the hood, but like every crib is a store. Like, have yeah, you seen that? Like every, every crib is a store. Everybody, listen, everybody, <laughs> it's it's almost like in our blood, man. Almost everybody are in- entrepreneurs there. Yeah. They all started their own business. I saw that shit and I was like, yo, not for nothing. Like this shit really reflects to me. Like no lie, everyone has like a family member posted on the first floor. Yeah, and they're just there yeah. with an AC on their floor, oh, like definitely. got bag of chips and soda, literally everywhere. I'm, I can't make this shit up. Like yeah. that's every house. It's amazing, man. Yeah. Um. So, what made you start your business? in printing like shirts etc okay so i started making music before i made clothes and i got into making clothes straight up because i um there was a there was like a an event that like my boy was promoting for like a full month and i was like damn like i feel like i gotta go hard for this shit but i ain't know how else to go hard besides rehearsing for the set right. so i'm like yo i'm about to sell merch and okay. then the more i talked to myself about it i was like yo like I feel like people will take me serious if I have merch. Like, why, why not? Right. So I was like, I'm going to call it NJ because you feel me? I already go by NJ Chris to, like, represent New Jersey and, and the area I was from. So once I did that, like, my whole mind frame on everything changed. Like, you know, I started feeling like, yo, I think I make money off music. But I was really making money off clothes because I was going to perform and, like, selling, having a merch table and stuff. So then from there, I started telling everybody, like, yo, I think y'all should make merch too. Because you, you feel me? Like, I just seen everybody just only, like, spend money on making music you don't really like see that back but with the clothing then they was just like okay so then I, I kept bringing like people to my manufacturer like oh like my boy wants to make clothes my boy wants to make clothes so then i ended up just being like kind of like like a broker kind of <laughs> so so to speak right so the thing but then I, I started getting more hands-on on into it so now i do that like where we have like a a whole business like we get every everything done like stickers banners stickers banners shirts what shirts, else anything Actually, anything you could think of, but obviously, like, the wilder you get, like, we might have to go overseas with it. So, okay. you know, might have some wait time. So, everything but. is made in home. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, most Perfect. of the stuff is, though, available. Unless you get, like, really crazy, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, a scarf and shit. Like, That's crazy. So, so would you um, you supply the the actual items as well? Everything. On top yeah, of the printing, yeah, so the shirts, everything. everything. Yeah, everything. So, let's everything. say, for example, a Barca Fitness, or if I wanted shirts for my podcast... You'd yeah, be able be to done. do that mass mass production, etc. For sure, for sure. Like, it, and if it's just t-shirts, get that shit done like in a week, bro. Like, oh, yeah. that's amazing. That's like great. Business days type shit. Yeah, that's cool. You you t- spoke a little bit about how you were into music, and then you decided to get into merch. Yeah. So I didn't know this. I usually do my homework with my guests. 
Yeah. Okay. So you so you basically said that you started off with music first and then you got into merch. Yeah. What got you into music then? What got me into music? I'm not gonna lie. Uh, shout out my boy Losco. Like he always told me I should do music. Like uh. I mean, I've like just how my life right now is both the music and the clothes. Like I was kind of like that before I had like my own music that I was making or clothes. Okay. I was kind of like, just going to a lot of concerts, and I would just like, uh, you know, shop for certain shit that you know you like. You're not gonna get at the mall. Like you have to like go on like a Facebook group chat or like you know get off a reseller and shit. So my boy who was kind of like the same as me, like he was into the same stuff. He made music, and he was like, "Yo, bro, if you made music, like." you would have a lot to talk about because, like, you're into, like, you feel me? Like, the fashion. So, like, he, the music. He, like, has he heard you? Yeah. Like, he do yeah. music and then you were just, he was just kind of like, bro, you're talented? Oh, no, I never or was did. It, no, like, I didn't, just a group of people I didn't do music. music yet. And I didn't do music. That They, like, oh, told shit. me, like, yo, you should do music. Because I was just basically chilling with people that did music. Okay. And they were like, yo, you should do music, too. Like, you'll have, like, shit to talk about, too. And, like, I eventually did. You feel me? And, like, I don't know. It started being, like, therapy and even and like not even that though like um just like anything like a lot of people are scared to like start trying to do something right and like even me like believe it or not i got backlash for like starting to do music why and i um yo that's the same shit i said i was like that shit didn't make sense i, I would have been like oh, i'd rather people say like it's like they don't fuck with it nah people were just like yo how are you a rapper now and shit and i'm like well bro like can't just be a rapper like you gotta just start dropping music and shit like right. you feel me like i guess like so so that's a perfect segue to for the you people know? out there that don't know NJ Chris, what's your genre? Um, do you do a little bit of everything or do you have a specific niche in nah, music? it's definitely hip hop. Like I'll be doing like hip hop music and shit. Um the beat selection though is all over the place though. I've done like all type of beats and I I'll be doing like remixes and shit. I do like one remix a year. Um if anything, if y'all watching this, comment what, what song you think I should remix this year. But I'll be doing like one remix a year of like a popping song. I do like hip hop beats, like trap beats, some drill beats. As though, uh, there was feeling. one that I actually went on your page on, um, and I believe there might have been a music video on it. The beat was very, very, like, mellow, was slow. Yeah, a lot of people say I got, like, that smoking music, not for nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gave me, like, like I'm like, yo, like, this is fire, because I, I listen to lyrics. Yeah. Dope. You know what I mean? But um, I was kind of like, you know what? Like, this would probably be fire if I was... If I was probably blasted. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, I don't smoke dope. anymore. I'm a man of yeah, God. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that, that stuff's dope, though. Like, um, I, I keep saying this for those who don't know. But like, I really like what I do nowadays mostly is like I do events. Mm. And that's where I get a chance to like display everything. Like, you know, that's where I get to perform at the end the of the tours. show to close it. The tours exactly. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tour again out here. People's um, Champ Tour Part 2 starting May. I fucking love that's that, bro. And, and, and um, that's something that I really wanted to touch upon. Um, uh, when was your first tour? Uh, so it happened exactly last year. Um, the first day I believe was um, like April twenty second. Yeah, wow. like four twenty. So literally, literally almost a year ago. Yeah, for the um, that shit was crazy. I didn't talk about this too much on on the podcast. I just did, but dude, that shit was crazy, bro. Like that tour is a perfect idea of like how my mind is, bro. So this, this is how my mind works. So I was like, yo, I want to make a shirt. <laughs> like I want to make a shirt. That's like me going on tour, but I never went on tour. So I'm like, all right, bro, I'm gonna go to like, I'm gonna do like five, six shows consecutively. Okay. And I remember saying, I remember telling my boy that, that that I do graphic designs with. I was like, yo, we gonna do five to six events in a row, and I'm gonna put that shit on the back of a shirt. And I said, I'm gonna have a tour that I always wanted. He's like, all right, cool. So he started making the flyer for this for this shit, right? For the these six events, mm. and I was like, yo, like in the middle of the of the events, that's when I'm gonna drop the shirt so people know it's relevant and shit. Cool. Literally, bro, like, by the third show, I had added, like, another six shows to it. I ended up doing 19 stops, like, on my first tour, bro. That's crazy. Like, specifically where? Where do you choose these destinations? So, my first tour from last year, the People's um, Champ Tour, um, 2022, that shit was, like, definitely heavy in uh, Hudson County. Like, okay. I did a lot of locations in Hudson County. Um, The only locations that might end up in Hudson County, I'm not going to lie, might have been, like, uh, I did an Empire Lounge. Yeah. I don't, that's Elizabeth. I don't right. think that's Hudson County and shit, though. Uh, but I did. No. Essex. That, that might Essex be Essex County. County. Yeah. Shout out to that. So she, like, you see, for example, like, that, that's a perfect example of how this shit started going. Like, I started doing these events, and then everybody that's doing anything, like, seeing what I was doing, and was like, yo, like, 
you know like let's do some shit so i was like yo bet like i'll perform amp. like it's just to add like you feel me range to the tour and shit like that yeah. this year's tour is about to be crazy though like i might end that shit improve i'm not gonna lie like i found the venue out there like yeah yeah i might end that shit improve because i want to go back like end of the summer and oh, shit come on now so man we're man turning crazy. international yeah, now yeah like because you feel me i did shit out there like i left i left mad clothes on people and shit like that I don't know. I might have my brand out there, but I don't think I'll sell. Like I might turn into like a like a nonprofit out there. What was your like first that. ever song, and what inspired you to make that song? Um, my first song is called like the first song I made is called NJ. To be honest, uh, I don't know. Like I always um, I feel like I always say everybody like there's no one that would surprise me if they did music i feel like there's a lot of people i've seen them react they'll be like nah what the fuck like this guy makes music now or like this person makes music but i feel like i've never reacted that way to anyone making music because i feel like everyone's had a song they liked especially as a kid and like you remix it to yourself you know what i'm saying like whether it's like you switch the lyric out to be funny or something like right, right, right. everyone's like rap to themselves type of shit yeah so it just comes like or if, if you want to obviously you know what i'm saying like uh Music should definitely be something that's comfortable and shit like that. But I feel like every everybody like want to make music. So that was your first song. Yeah. How did? Where was your inspiration for that specific song? So I had like I guess certain things written down. Like nowadays, I really just be like going off the vibe and shit. I don't really write too much. But that day, like I had been writing a little bit because I told you that my boys put into my ear like, "Oh, you should make yeah. music and shit." And right. I'm I'm with these guys every day. Okay. And they're making music, so nice. I'm here like, "All right, but I'm probably gonna get on something soon." It was like a boom bat type beat though. Like I was really listening to like old school hip hop at that time. Like this is like 20. I started making music like 2017, 2016. So right now in this current time, like the Migos are popping. You feel okay. me? But I'm listening to like Biggie still and like Woots. Like not all the time. You feel me? I feel but like, I was listening to Sway Lee and shit or some random shit. But like. I was listening to like old shit. Um, I, I just started making like these two hip hop beats, and then I made like one trap beat called like like Fuck Twelve, and that shit like when I first dropped music, I dropped three songs at the same time, and like that shit got lit because it was like three different beats type shit. So so which which one really really Fuck hit Twelve? Home? Like Fuck Twelve? Fuck Twelve? Yeah, like people people like who know about me since the beginning know like that song went crazy. Now, uh, go crazy to the point where, like, everybody in Hudson County was bumping to it. Yeah. Or everybody yeah. in Jersey or, like... I would say, like, definitely people in Hudson County were bumping to it. And, and I told you, like, at first, I was getting, like, a lot of, like... People in my own city were like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you make music? Like, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> like, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, where did it come from? Like, I was getting, like, mad plays from, like, Newark. Mm. Newark, like, Jersey City, shit like that. Because I'm, I'm from Union City. Right. But I was getting, like, mad plays from, like, Newark and Jersey City and shit like that. And it also, like, people kind of didn't know what, like fuck 12 mental this is like before though you know what i'm saying well like, for the people out there who don't know what what is fuck I mean, 12? that means fuck the police like oh, fuck shit. the police like okay. I, I aspired to make that song because like in 2016 they did a um that um like nwa movie and shit and yeah. they're famous for that song like, like fuck the police so like you feel me like it just i, I saw the movie and i'm like damn like they, these guys made a song called fuck the police and like that's just like the most relevant thing to perform like even at that point too, like I never did a show yet. I did, I just did um, like I just started making music, but that shit kind of like became who who I, who I started being as a, a musician. Like I kind of make songs, imagining people's reactions to mm. shit. Like you feel me? Like I have a song called Setback, and 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 the hook to it is like you gotta come back every setback, yo. You gotta come back every setback, yo. You feel me? Like because I feel like that's so, like why would you not turn up to that? Like who you feel me? Who's not gonna admit that they've been through like a setback yeah. and stuff? You know what I'm saying? Relatable. So it's relatable exactly so i started thinking about like yo fuck that like i don't know if people are gonna play my music for a reason but like if i make it something that's like not even necessarily like something that you chant to but just something that's like relatable you feel mm. me fuck it so i saw the movie i'm like what's more relatable than fuck the police you know what i'm saying so that was yeah like you said that was almost like your 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 first major hit you had the other song that was your first song now your first official music video yeah was for what song it's called touch that my boy cosmic yeah. shout out to him that, so, that's probably like my second like big song too so anything. what was the process of doing that music video how'd you get connected with someone to record that music video but so i had seen somebody's music video on youtube and like th i knew they were from jersey city and shit and like i was watching the video it was a love song and shit and um and the video was fire, you feel me? It was just, like, the person, like, in a, in a telly. Like, you know, there was, like, drinking and shit. Like, right. Like, whatever, like, with girls. And 
then they were just like in the background there was mad effects bro there was like a whole heart floating behind there and the shit was like breaking in half and exploding and i'm like yo this shit is so fire like who made this and i, and I saw the person's page and um i was like i said they were from west new york and shit oh shout out my boy on hippias oh, he changed his name now to like director hex now though and shit but um he like i saw i saw his instagram and i was like, i know who he was but i just knew he was from west new york and um one day i'm at my studio and he's just there bro like uh i mean i'm pretty sure you know about like music um like camera terms and shit so like he was getting b-roll your phone i have oh i have a i have a guest downstairs yeah at the lobby do we just continue all right cool i just leave the door open bro all right so and so yeah, as you were saying, you know the process of a music video. So you saw that. Yeah, like I, I basically saw somebody's music video that that I knew was local and it had like some really cool effects. And uh, I, I was just wondering how I could link up with the guy and should I hit him up on Instagram. And then one day, like uh, like I'm pretty sure you might be familiar with like some terms of like videography. Like, he was getting B roll <laughs> like for another music video. So like the studio where I was at, he was just there like getting random B roll to put in a video. And I'm like, yo, you're that guy that like did this video. He's like, yeah. So I told him, like, I told him everything, like, uh, since the beginning, I've always been, like, very well, like, very involved in, like, the music video and shit. Not that I don't let, like, directors do their thing, but, like, I definitely always have, like, an idea behind the directing. Um, And I told him, like, everything I wanted to do for the video, and then he was like, I right, bet. So then we linked up, like, a week after that, and, and we shot So what was the theme of that music video that you ended up So the song's called Touch That, and, um... So back to how I was saying, like, uh, w once I made the, the Fucked Up song, like, I started getting, like, into, like, my niche of, like, how I made music. So I always wanted to make it relatable. So that song, Touch That, is, is I was just saying, like, if I got it on my niggas, Touch That. Like, you feel me? So it's about, like, just sharing stuff with the homies and shit. So it was just, um, at that point, I remember uh, I found, like, some Converse, bro, for the low on Beeline. And I bought all them shits. And I got, like, my boy to embroider, like, NJ on them and put, nice. like, the jersey shape on them. So, I, like, in that video, I'm just, like, showing, like, pieces that I I don't have merch yet for sale. You feel me? This is, is kind of, like, I started getting, like, a following for clothes before even, like, making clothes. Right. I was doing it for, like, myself, like, customizing it. Yeah. So, in that video, I'm, like, flexing clothes that I don't even have, like, merch. But I might always have it on. So, you feel me? Like, it, it just felt, like, exclusive and shit exactly. like that. And, like, it, we were just pretty deep. We were pretty deep. And, like, for the first time... um. Because even my music videos are like, are like that now. Like, you know, like, it's not like you got to, like, wear it local to, like, be around me and shit. But, like, in my music video, people usually have, like, the brands that, like, I make or, like, my boys make and shit. So, like, in that, I love how, like, in the first music video, you already see that. Even though it was less though, like, probably, like, one or two of us had brands. Like, now, like, like I said, because I, I like, I'm inclined to get people to make clothes and have merch. Like, a lot of people I know have merch. So, yeah, like, we be deep as hell. Like, you you um, know, it's it's almost... Nowadays, I feel as if someone who has a business, someone who, you know, has a brand, not just a business, a brand, whether it's themselves or a business, they have their own merch. Do you think that's a positive thing or is that a negative thing? Nah, it's definitely a positive thing, bro. Like I, like I said, I didn't really start seeing any, like like fruits of labor to be honest till i started putting out merch bro like i feel like it's always a good option to have merch available because um like imagine somebody doesn't like even like want to promote my music like that you wear my shirt you promote my music you feel me you fuck with the music you promote the merch it's just a, it's a, like a really huge cross promotion you know and sometimes you gotta think about like that like that's why i be thinking like well it's not even about making merch bro it's about making like something that's gives your shit like something physical because like i'll be thinking about like y'all want to make posters and they're like oh people be like why would you want to make a poster do you think you're that lit that someone wants to poster you but i'm like yo it's worth a try and guess what if someone gets my poster it's different like if you buy my shirt like if you're not dirty like you can wear it max like twice or once a month you know right. then it's going to the laundry you get right. to promote me twice you don't probably think of me twice when you see that of shirt. course posters like that's in your room bro you feel me like whether you like it or not like you know what i'm saying like that, that that's around stuff yeah. like that phone cases you know now, what i'm saying now um, in, in coasters general, though, coasters in general. shit so, like that so for yourself like i i completely agree mm -hmm. you know for myself like i have my own shirts and i give them out for free for my clients yeah because that's you know you sign up with me you get a free shirt you get a free shaker it's branding it's marketing they use it they wear it they wear it wherever and 
they have my website there they have my instagram there but in general my question just to kind of like rephrase my question um do you think it ends up getting saturated to the point where the market is almost or unsaturated the market to the point where everybody ends up having a brand so then what's the fucking exclusivity i love then? that i feel like i've never got to talk about that enough because some people don't even know about like the concept of shit even being bro, saturated listen, I'm, a, I'm a good host bro, bro, man i, nah, I yeah, ask good like, questions um dude this has definitely been like saturated especially as of 2020 because um a clothing brand is like you know when you see these videos and, and you know shout out to brian because he does a good job at like posting this stuff and getting into like the algorithm that is with all the other problem stuff you'll literally see videos of it. people be like how to become a millionaire in one week with a clothing brand and shit and they're showing their payouts um that's how cringy this shit's become bro like people have just been pushing this stuff through the past two three years to get it's like a fast come up so do it's you on, end up thinking um, like that that's positive um, no it's negative um I think it's it's positive because it can definitely be done. Obviously, they're showing like the, the receipts for it and all of that, but it comes with a lot of hard work, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, the law of any business, though. I'm pretty sure you know is like the the first two years is like it's like drowning. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to get past those first two years, mm-hmm. and then from there you start to like actually become used to how it's running and shit like that. Um, I would say yeah, the clothing market is definitely saturated, but like anything, um, you put God first and like you know what I'm saying. Like, if it's really your passion, like if you stick to it. You're going to make it past those two years that I'm talking about where it's kind of like weird and you got to like dug it out. And then from there, you feel me like you should stay on board. Yeah, I would I, say. I feel you, man. So I have this segment on my podcast with my one on one guests where I ask random entrepreneur questions. Cool. OK, um, it's almost like a machine gun spitfire. You could answer in like one or two sentences and then we can kind of start closing up shop for the beautiful ladies coming um so first question is who's your biggest influence and why uh my biggest influence have to be my bro Lil Sko. he's like a, a fellow music artist that i'm always making music with and he engineers my music too and he has a clothing brand called the help for ourselves like oh nice i feel like he's just like you feel me like he just be going crazy is he a big name around here as well um to me yeah to me yeah i'll be saying he's like the best person out here not for nothing yeah how do you balance being an artist and having your own business Damn, I actually appreciate that question. I'm not gonna lie, I don't get asked that enough. Um, honestly, I I honestly could say I leave it up to people, bro. Like I just sometimes catch up on DMs, see what people are feeling or not. I try not to just go too crazy into the clothing because you feel me right now. I feel like I could just go crazy designing shirts. You feel me? But like my music process is a little slower. Like I like to take my time more. Okay. And create a vibe more and shit like that. But I leave it up to people. To be honest, day in a life of an artist on shoot day. Oh, a man. music video. Uh, so something I never really shared to, to keep real with you is I actually hate showing music videos because uh, a lot of stuff I be doing with music videos is like smoking and shit. And right. it's just like I people get like fucked up, bro. Yeah. A lot of people get you like... You got to start babysitting? Nah, like I'm talking about me. Like I be, oh, sure. <laughs> like, I be getting pretty lit on music video days. You feel me? Because like people always like just try to make sure I'm lit to like be up in the energy and shit. Yeah. Um, But besides that, it'd be good. It'd be good. Okay. Well, but like, what's what's the day in the life? So you wake up, you have fucking breakfast, you oh, scratch your ass, like tell me up, the oh, whole day. Um, group chats, being a, definitely being annoying in group chats, telling the bros to pull up. Um, I always post about it too. Like, uh, I try to give people chances to pull up, or be like, "Yo, who wants to pull up?" Uh, and I'll get free merch and shit for people to pull oh, up. Oh, that's dope. That's a good incentive. Yeah. Um, and usually try to make sure I hydrate because, like, I'm saying, like that going fucked up. Shit, like that getting fucked up shit goes hand in hand with just hydration bro right so try to make sure i'm definitely hydrated for the day and i usually whoever i shoot with like because i shoot with like multiple different people not all of my videos are the same person i'm probably try, always try to go eat after with them okay that's dope and talk more that's yeah dope. that's dope craziest shit you've seen on your tour performance craziest shit i've seen on my tour performance um one thing would be um we had smoke machines at one event <laughs> and like the fucking fire alarm went off, the fire alarm went off and like the firefighters had to shut it down. But damn, did that make it into the so, music video or not? Um, in the recap, yeah, that's another <laughs> vlog. That's another vlog. Um, that's on YouTube. Y'all should go watch that. Um, but the real thing, the real crazy thing is, it's funny because you actually was anything I should talk about or not. But fuck that shit. I'm I'm gonna talk about this shit. We got a city fine, bro. Mm. We got a city fine this summer for um. 
doing an event uh if you ever heard of rolling loud i did like my own version of rolling loud called nj loud you can find a flyer on my instagram that shit went crazy like man people thought it was like a real thing and it was though because i really threw an event but i basically um had like 20 plus artists perform each day like back to back at wow. this place and um yo i'm proud to say that shit was actually like my first city sanctioned event like on the spot on the street it said like no parking you feel me like nj event That's so like dope. nobody could park we were performing outside at, but i only had the curfew till eight mm. and we kept it going to like 10 and uh, that shit got crazy bro that like was crazy. yeah so what's next for nj chris tell me what's your what's your next venture um so musically i just put out trial and error with my boy little skull like two months ago um go get that that shit is on all streaming platforms and i'm about to drop something called dream chasers and like end of april it's gonna nice. be like seven songs all my most recent songs i really fuck with them and uh like i said before we starting tour again like may people's champ tour um it's gonna be a way larger range than before people's champ two people's champ tour on um, part two nice. um might even end up in peru you feel me so if that's, y'all hearing this crazy, okay yeah you, you, you gotta let me know man yeah. out to all my yeah, that out shit there. might be crazy <laughs> yeah. um all right bro listen we're closing up i have this tradition oh wait i have a question on the gram all right so this this might be random but uh, again oh. i have i have this tradition to answer all questions on ig how are you dealing with spring break college girls right now? How am I dealing? With, uh, I'm not going to Miami. We, he's not. He's not, not going to Miami, bro. I'm not going to Miami. He's not going to Miami. We, we here. I'm not. I, I'm not either. Yeah. I'm a man of God now. I don't do anything. I'm focused on work. They say they saw him in that water in Miami. That's what they say. <laughs> they saw him in that water in Miami. Yeah, bro. So, so listen. I want to toast to your business. I have this tradition here where I end up having a shot with all my guests here. It's going to be a little mini shot because we do have back-to-back -back shows. I don't want you talking crazy like, like other guests, you know? Yeah, man. Shout out to Brian, man. He on season three. Season three, bro. Let's take a shot. Yo. Salute to your success, bro. Appreciate you. How'd you like being on the pod? It was dope, what bro. What was your experience? Um, it was smooth, bro. It was smooth. Uh, I've been on a couple of podcasts. Just dropped one recently. You should go check that out too. But I'm something I definitely want to compliment you on before I go is definitely like you asked some good questions, bro. Like I liked how you asked if like the business was saturated. That was pretty dope. And like also like the day in the life in the music video. I feel like no one's really asked that either. Yeah, bro. Listen, uh, whatever guest I have, I make sure to have a thorough. Uh, stalking so i end up having to literally ask specific questions on their life and on their business you know i i, I don't wing this shit i do my homework that's good All right nah, so shows, um it, it makes me a little unique and i appreciate you acknowledging that um guys listen we are finishing off the show that's a wrap nj chris please follow him on instagram he's gonna be going on tour please hit him up if you want any anything printed Anywhere on anything, correct? Yeah, tune in on NJ Brand at NJ Brand on Instagram or hit the website www.nj.shop. You'll find all the flyers, all the contact info on there. There you go, bro. And uh, stay tuned for the After Hour Show. We are going to be going live in 15 minutes with beautiful ladies. And NJ, Chris, you're gonna yes, you're sir. gonna you're gonna be with us too, right? Let's do it. Let's all do right. it. Bring cool, Miami bro. to Hudson County. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, guys. Have a good night.